Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. Um, there's quite a few attending today, so we're going to give it about a minute or so, and then we will begin. All right, so thank you all for joining us today. Um, on behalf of the Environmental Finance Center Network, welcome to the first session in our 2022 Water Loss Webinar Series, The Importance of Water Auditing. My name is Avery Davis from the Syracuse University Environmental Finance Center. And before we get started, we're gonna cover a few housekeeping items and then we will jump in. So during the training today, everyone will be kept on mute to ensure audio quality. If you have a question, please type it into the GoToWebinar question dialog box anytime throughout the session. We will be saving your questions for a facilitated Q&A session at the end of the presentation. After the webinar, you will receive a follow-up email that includes a link to the recording, our evaluation, and other information you may need. You can also download today's slides by using the Handouts tab on your GoToWebinar control panel. We've uploaded a PDF for you all there. This 30-minute session introduces important information about this series, but it is not eligible for any type of credit. No certificates will be issued for this session, but there will be certificates for future sessions. Um, and additionally, attendees from the states of Tennessee and Indiana are potentially eligible for credit for attending the entire series. So if you have any questions or um, are interested in that, please contact us at smallsystems at syr.edu. Now for a little bit about the Environmental Finance Center Network. We provide training and technical assistance to small public water systems in all US states and territories to help local water systems achieve their goals and stay in compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act. If your community or utility needs assistance with drinking water system management, please feel free to contact us as you may be eligible for free assistance. We will be sharing a link to our request form shortly in the chat. And on that note, I would like to introduce our presenters for today. So from the Southwest Environmental Finance Center at the University of New Mexico, we have Don Nall and James Markham, both research engineers, as well as director Heather Himmelberger. So welcome presenters and we can get started. So Heather, I'm going to make you a presenter and then we can go ahead and begin. Okay, that sounds great. Um, and let me just put it into presenter mode and make sure, um, Avery, that it looks okay on your end and you Everything can hear it all right. Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, I just wanted to add my thanks for taking the time to end the, or to attend this morning session. This is the first session for our national webinar series on water loss control and water auditing. And this one is meant as an introduction to the series. The series is being presented by the Southwest Environmental Finance Center, which is part of the Environmental Finance Center network, and we're doing this under funding from EPA. The funding provides free training and technical assistance to small water systems, and this series is particularly aimed at a set of states such as California, Indiana, Tennessee, Georgia, who are in some way requiring water audits or water loss control, but any system is welcome to attend and any system will find it beneficial whether or not your state requires any type of water auditing or water loss control. Uh, again, this first introductory webinar will be a little bit shorter. We're only going 30 minutes today um, compared to other sessions that will be about an hour in length. And this one is going to cover the importance of water auditing. It's gonna to start to answer the question of why you should do water auditing and control, whether or not your state requires it. So even if your state um, 
does or doesn't require, it doesn't matter. It's still a really good thing to do for your system. And we hope throughout the series, you will see the wider benefits to your system of doing water auditing and look at it as not a requirement, but rather something that's an important aspect of properly managing water utility. Um, and as every mentioned, myself, Heather Himmelberger, the director of the Southwest EFC, Don Nall, and James Markham will be the trainers for today. And we're all engineers with the um, Southwest EFC, and we've been engaged in water loss and related topics for um, quite a long time. Um, I've actually been at the center for about 28 years now, and Don and James for many, many years as well. So we're, again, very happy to be with you today. Um, on the screen now, you see the EFC mission statement, and we have bolded a few words for a reason. So we come at water loss control from a holistic view, and we want the program you develop to be based on taking appropriate actions based on your system's data. It's really important to understand the information that you have and how that can lead you to really good results. And it's also very important to learn about and understand water auditing, even if you employ someone else to help you with the process. So even if you get outside entities, you really need to learn about the, the um, water loss control and auditing process so that you can interact with them properly and really understand what's going on in your system. And your involvement helps, your, uh, helps you and anybody else on your team learn about all kinds of aspects about your water system far beyond water loss. We're going to have two short poll questions that Avery is going to run. And in the interest of time today, we're gonna to actually have the response window open only for 30 seconds. So we're gonna ask you to be a little bit quicker in your responses today, and we'll give you a five second warning. Um, today, we don't have CEUs for this session, but in every other session we will uh, for states, uh, certain states that like Avery mentioned. And then in some cases, you can um, send certificates after the fact to your states. Um, generally speaking, states want you to answer all the poll questions to get the CEU. So today is kind of a practice session to get you used to the idea of answering poll questions and that that's an important part of getting your CEUs if you do want CEUs. And it also helps add some interactivity into the sessions. So Avery, if you would go ahead and start our first poll question. Uh, so the question is, does your water system have a water loss control team? So is there any kind of group of you um, in your water loss, uh, in your system that you would consider some kind of team to do the work? So you have choices about yes, and it meets regularly, yes, but we don't meet very often, no, but we are actively developing one, no, we don't have one, or I'm not sure if we have one. And then if you're not a utility um, or don't represent a utility, you can answer that not a utility uh, one. So we'll close the poll in five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so it looks like um, about 31% is our biggest response that we don't have one. And then we have um, the re uh, several responses at the top where it looks like we have maybe about 30% or so looking at trying to develop a team. And this is uh, throughout the series, we will be coming back to the idea of having a team to work on this issue. Even if you're a small utility, you can still have a little bit of a team. It may be a small team, but you can still have a team. Uh, next poll, please. So this poll is, does your water system currently conduct water audits? Um, so your choices here is yes, you do do water audits and you do them in house, meaning that your utility fills them out. Uh, yes, and we work closely with a consultant to develop them. So you're doing most of the work, but you have a consultant to help. Um, yes, but we have a consultant do most of the work. So in that case, you're doing them, but you're contracting out most of that activity. Uh, no, we don't currently conduct water audits or I don't know. And then again, we have that not a utility choice for anybody um, who's attending today that doesn't represent a utility. So we'll close in five, four, three, two, and one. So it looks like we have about 28%, which is great, that do water audits in-house. We have another 11% that gets some out outside help. 
about a quarter that aren't currently doing audits, and then about 35% that aren't utilities. So thank you very much for participating in these polls. Um, that's the only polls for today. And again, this is kind of just getting us into the practice of we will have poll questions in future webinars, and that's part of getting your certificate and CEUs um, participating in the polls. So just a little bit about uh, the purpose of the program, and we'll go into some program logistics. Um, this series is really intended to present an overview of the bigger picture of water loss control and the role of a water audit in that process. So auditing is important. It provides you good background data that helps you move forward, but it's just one tool in the toolbox, and it definitely represents more of a beginning than an end of the process. So the audit helps you quantify and categorize your losses, and once you know what kind of problem you have, you can start developing solutions that will be based on good sound data and information. And those solutions will be the focus of uh, webinars later in the series. Uh, so some program logistics. Uh, this slide shows topics, dates, and times for future sessions. Um, and currently, um, you have probably seen flyers that show a six session series. And we wanted to mention that we're actually adding a bonus seventh webinar that's focused on the role of finance and billing staff in the water loss control and water auditing process. So much of the data you get is going to be coming from your billing and finance department. And it's really important for them to understand what you need and how they fit into the big picture so they can better give you data, better help you understand what data you have um, also, in the post-audit phase, actions you take to try to increase revenue or reduce water loss are not necessarily free, so you're going to have to build in a financial understanding and cost-benefit analysis into the actions you choose to take. We do recommend that, if possible, you have your whole team, if you have a team working on this, um, attend all the sessions because it's important for the team members to understand the big picture, not just their particular area of concern. And one of the best aspects of conducting a water audit is that it brings transparency and provides an opportunity not just to see what your policies, practices, and procedures are, but to critically evaluate them. In some cases, you may choose to improve them, and in others, you may be learning how data gathered in one part of the utility effect affects another part. It is very common to find both data gaps and redundancies as part of the auditing process, and addressing, addressing those are gonna help your efficiency. The series is designed to flow from one topic to the next, so we encourage you to attend all the sessions if at all possible. If you need to miss the session, they will be recorded for future viewing, but be aware that we cannot offer CEUs for the recordings, only attendance at live events. So if you're looking for the CEU aspect, you really will need to attend the live events to get that. And then each of the coming sessions will have an applied activity associated with them so that it will kind of describe and give you um, options for how to apply what you learn to your facility. And importantly, we have free technical assistance available to help you with applying what you learn to your facility or any other aspect of water loss control. However, our assistance is not limited just to water loss control. We can assist you with a wide range of technical managerial and financial issues. So if you have a question about rates or asset management or disinfection or something else, Either we or, or one of our EFC network partner, partners will likely be able to help. And the technical assistance is at no cost to you. It's being paid for by EPA. Um, and we can serve any small systems, and those are any system serving 10,000 or fewer in population. So it's about 90 some percent of systems in the country. So likely um, you are a small system. Uh, please contact us. We really are here to help. And now I'm going to turn it over to Dawn for the next part of the webinar. So take it away, Dawn. All right, great, thank you. Okay, hopefully everything's in working order. Um, so we want to just take a few minutes to talk about what water loss control programs look like. So there are a couple of things we want to understand going into these water loss control sessions. First, we want you to understand what your water loss control program is. Oftentimes, water loss is thought of as, you know, maybe just one or two things, but your program can really include a wide variety of activities that help you reduce your non-revenue water. 
So if we're supposed to be addressing non-revenue water, we probably need to understand what exactly that is. So non-revenue water, or NRW shortened, uh, is water that goes out to the system that we don't get paid for. So how does that happen? Well, we can give that water away on purpose, such as to use for firefighting or watering the park or running the fountain downtown, um, but we don't charge the, for that water use. Um, it can be water that can be taken unbeknownst to us. So it can be via theft or via inaccurate metering, um, or it can be water that's leaking out of your pipes, never actually making it to a customer. So what it really boils down to is if we subtract out all of the water that we sell from all of the water that we produce, what's left over is all the water we didn't sell or that didn't generate revenue. So that's our non-revenue water. So when we talk about non-revenue water, um, there is a difference between lost water and non-revenue water. And that difference is the water we knowingly give away. So we wanna make sure we're not using that terminology interchangeably um, because there is a difference there. And then if we think about um, the different terminology that we use for lo water loss, um, there are differences there too. The water that's stolen or is caused by inaccurate records is known as apparent water loss. Uh, and while the water that's going to a customer, um, you know, it's actually going there, it's not making revenue, uh, so that's the apparent water loss. And then the water that leaks from the system is known as our real water loss. So just a little terminology there on non-revenue water and water loss. So I stated that your water loss control program includes a wide variety of activities, any activities that address non-revenue water. One of those activities is identifying how much non-revenue water you actually have. If we understand the volume of the water in each of those categories, then we can also understand the value, the dollar amount, the revenue in each of those cat categories. So to estimate the volumes in each of the non-revenue water categories, you can use a water balance where the water in equals the water out. This is also known as a water audit. And you can see the categories we've been talking about in red are a part of this water balance. So one method of water auditing is AWWA's free water audit software, and it can be used to help you identify those volumes and the values of your non-revenue water. But no matter what tool you use, the most, import the most important part is to make sure you're accounting for all of the water in your system. We don't want to have any unaccounted for water anymore. We use that terminology in the past. We certainly don't want to tell someone we don't know where our water is going. We don't know what's happening to it. We want to account for all of that water. Um, so these boxes in this, in this water balance should help us account for the water. When you use a water balance, you're basing it on the idea that all the water entering your system comes out somewhere. So you should be able to put values in all of the boxes in this water, water balance. Um, granted, some of those will be estimates, except for one, you probably can't enter numbers into the real losses. They're not easily measured. Uh, so you use this balance uh, and calculate the real losses based on all of the other numbers that you put into your water balance. So the estimation of these water volumes from the water balance or the audit is one of our diagnostic tools that empowers us to take actions to be able to address what we like to call the blue and green water loss problem. Um, with blue representing water volume and green representing revenue and expenditures. So the blue problem is water that isn't going where we want it to go and the green problem is the revenue that we're not making, but we potentially could be making. So when we complete the water audit, we learn about our water loss and we can begin to take actions to address the water loss, which can save both water and revenue. 
So this is just the beginning of our water loss control program. It's one of the tools in our in our toolbox. Um, and so when we think about uh, the water loss control program, uh, if this is just the beginning, we need to think about what else to be in the program. So I'm going to turn things over to James and let him kind of walk you through and take a look at what else we might include in our program. So James, take it away. All right, why is my screen not reacting here? Hold on one second, here we go. All right, so what else do we have in a water loss control program besides an audit? Well, as we've been alluding to, there are a lot of different components. You know, it's essentially all of the activities that you undertake to reduce water loss or, or reclaim lost revenue. You know, some of those components, but obviously not all of them, are listed in the next couple of slides. And if you look at this, I think it becomes obvious why we approach water loss control uh, as a team effort, uh, because in most cases, though not all, uh, just there isn't going to be one person that's wearing all of these different hats. So, you know, theft deterrence, metering ac accuracy, developing goals, tracking data, strategic pipe replacement. Those are all components of a water loss program, as are things like customer education and how you do your flushing and what your fire department's doing, how you act, uh, interact with your billing system. Um, all of these and the various other policies and procedures in your utility that have an impact on water loss and revenue reclamation are part of that water loss program. So uh, as Heather and Don both alluded to, we're gonna be focusing on taking a very holistic approach to water loss control in these uh, series. And it's about a lot more than money. Um, there is definitely that green uh, aspect to it. Uh, money is part of the picture. Uh, but one of the other things that we're going to try to do is emphasize uh, the variety of benefits that are, are available to you by actively engaging in water loss control. Um, it's about more than money. It's even about more than just resource management. Um, of course, there is that financial aspect, but there are also social and environmental aspects uh, to water loss control as well. And you know, we view water loss control largely through an asset management lens. Um, and it definitely has benefits in all three of these categories. You know, The activities that you undertake or choose not to are obviously gonna have a financial impact uh, on your utility in terms of lost revenue or gained revenue, but they're also gonna have a social impact on your utility vis-a-vis -vis your standing in the community, the community's perception of you as a good steward of your water resources and your infrastructure, which in turn is gonna have a big impact on your community's willingness to engage with you uh, when you need them to and accept inevitable rate increases and in expenditures for infrastructure that are gonna acquire at some point down the line. Um, and of course, there are gonna be environmental impacts to water loss events as well, uh, both in terms of lost resources, but also you know, leaks and particularly major breaks can lead to environmental damage. Um, so yes, there's those financial aspects for water loss control and the audit itself primarily focuses on those because those are the easiest to categorize. Uh, but as you'll see, as we go through this series, there are a lot of other benefits that we're gonna look at. Uh, in an asset management context, we typically refer to these three together as a triple bottom line. And that's a concept that we're gonna be coming back to uh, over and over, over the course of the series. Uh, why bother auditing? You know, some of you have to, uh, some of you want to, um, uh, and those are typically the reasons why. Uh, sometimes it's both. Um, and, you know, you might be doing auditing or be thinking about developing auditing because we saw that there's a lot of systems on today who aren't really doing that yet uh, to track your own efficiency. Uh, or you might be doing it because the state's required it. And I want to point out that the focus of auditing requirements in states varies a little bit. In some states, uh, the requirement is about financial responsibility, making sure that your system has the revenue it needs to operate successfully in the long term. In other states, the focus is resource stewardship with a goal of making sure that you know available water resources aren't being wasted unnecessarily. But in all cases, what the state wants you to do and what we're really gonna emphasize uh, in this series is to use this tool to better understand your non-revenue water understand your real losses, understand your apparent losses, and look at ways to increase revenue and decrease water loss. In other words, it's about gaining knowledge and taking action. Uh, and this means that you really do have to go beyond sort of completing the audit and submitting it or putting it on a shelf. Um, 
to, to make improvements, you're going to need to take action uh, based on your audit. And as Heather pointed out, uh, the audit is typically uh, the starting point, not the end point. Um, you're going to have to do other kinds of analysis as well, because as Don also pointed out, you know, the, the audit gives you a real loss value, but it doesn't tell you exactly where those losses are coming from. So if real loss is a problem, you have to uh, address it. And we'll help you with tools uh, for that as well. And developing a holistic, comprehensive water loss control program is definitely going to put you in a position to be able to do that. Uh, we typically start with the audit and promote water auditing because it's a really good diagnostic tool. It gives you volumes and values and validity information uh, about your losses, and it helps you quantify the magnitude and type of non-revenue problem that you have, a non-revenue water problem that you have. Um, it also provides a baseline to compare future performance against. You know, if your pipes aren't leaking now, someday they will be. And if you've been tracking losses via audits and other analysis, you'll be able to see those patterns developing and we'll be able to deal with them proactively. Um, the water audit's a great tool uh, that you can use in a water loss control program if you have one that doesn't currently audit, or if you're thinking about developing a water loss control program, it's a great tool to develop that program around. Uh, it's important to recognize that the audit is not perfect. You know, no tool is. Uh, it's going to be as good as the data that goes into it, um, but it gives you information that will help you guide your decision making and provides, as Heather said, a great opportunity to undertake that critical evaluation of what your utility is doing, why you're doing it, and whether it's working or not, and what you can change. And also, you know, if you approach it from a team framework, it really gives you a chance to break down information and data silos uh, and bring that transparency to the process so that the sum ends up being, uh, or the whole ends up being greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, as we said, the audit is one tool of many. We're going to be talking about a variety of different tools uh, in the water loss toolbox over the course of this uh, training session, particularly uh, in the sessions where we talk about addressing real and apparent loss. Um, you know, uh, we'll introduce you to those tools um, and you'll get decide which to decide which ones are, are best used for you. Our main goal here is uh, to make sure that you're avoiding mismatching remedies and problems. Um, if you don't use the tools that you have correctly, you could end up applying the wrong tool to the problem and wasting more time and money and not saving. Uh, just as a quick example, you know, we worked with a system once that had used leak detection because they were convinced that they had a real loss problem. They didn't find any leaks and they were so convinced that that couldn't be true, they went out and did it again uh, and got the same results. And once we got involved in the process, what we realized was they didn't actually have a water loss problem, they had a data problem. Um, so, you know, that's another kind of uh, uh, sort of eureka moment that can come out of developing a water audit. Uh, you realize what you know and what you don't know about your system, uh, and you can use that to sort of increase your understanding of what's going on. Um, again, remember it's a about a lot more than money, and we will be emphasizing this. And again, our real goal here is going to be to offer training that you can use to put into practice and make change in your system. Um, we've got those applied activities. Those will guide you through steps to sort of take it home uh, and, and do something with the knowledge that you gain in this series. And as Heather pointed out, and I'm going to uh, reiterate, technical assistance is a big part of this program. Uh, we do financial, managerial, and technical assistance. Um, and as Heather said, if uh, we at the Southwest Environmental Finance Center can't answer your questions, chances are the larger EFC network will be able to do that. Uh, and it's not limited just to water loss control. Um, you know, we can provide you assistance with water audits. We have tons of resources. We have a water loss switchboard that we will give you access to that has additional resources. We can help with mapping. We can help with data collection. Um, we can help you do risk analysis if you've got data and you're not sure what to do with it. Uh, rate reviews are something that we can approach. Uh, as I said, we've come at water loss from an asset management uh, uh, lens. And so if you've got questions about asset management, we've got tons of resources that can help you there as well. Um, key takeaways from this session and from this series is that, you know, water loss control is, is comprehensive. Uh, it's just, it's a lot more than just doing the balance or an audit. Um, it's all about taking action, but you really want those actions to be data informed, both in the big picture and in, in the small. Um, really think about the full range of benefits uh, that are available from uh, actions that you can, can take. There are economic benefits, but there are other social and environmental triple bottom line benefits uh, that come into play as well. Um, this gives you a great opportunity to question the assumptions uh, uh, that you may have about what's going on in your system. Um, 
you know, that is, as I said, the best part about developing a water audit uh, is, is being able to ask those critical questions. Um, and we'd like to reemphasize that, you know, doing this in a comprehensive way takes cooperation and coordination between different departments and different types of personnel. Um, you do not have to do this process alone. You know, we're here on the, the training side, but that technical assistance piece is crucial. Uh, we're gonna have those individual activities. If you need help with those in between the sessions, um, we're here for you. Uh, we've been doing this remotely for a long time. The last two years, we've really upped our game uh, as, the, as the quarantine has required us to do most, most work remotely. Uh, but uh, we are here for you and are really looking forward to working with you guys over the next couple of months uh, and either you know improving the loss control program that you have in place uh, or, or helping you develop one. Uh, with that, um, we're 30 seconds over. I apologize for that. We'll open the floor to questions. Um, we're happy to stick on for another few minutes and answer questions. And obviously, if there's any questions uh, that we don't have time to get to, uh, we will reach out to you after this session. I'm going to throw up our contact information here just so you have it. Uh, this will be coming up uh, in each of our ongoing sessions. So if you don't happen to take a screenshot here, don't worry about it. Uh, you'll be able to connect with us. So with that, uh, I'll open the floor uh, if we have any questions that need to be answered. We definitely do have questions that came in. I'm going to turn it over to Avery, though, and let her distribute the wrap up information for those folks that maybe can't stick around. OK. Thank yeah, thank you, Don. And thank you all for your presentations. So there are a good amount of questions coming in, so I'll make this quick. Um, but following the webinar, you will receive a follow up email with our survey and a link to the recording. We will also be setting, sending a separate follow up email from EFCN with the slides from today, as well as the recording. So we ask you to let us know your thoughts on today's session as this helps us plan future webinars on things that are important to you. So. Uh, thank you all for attending, and we can get into the Q&A. Right, thanks, Avery. So we do have a couple of good questions I want to make sure we cover before we jump off. Um, one of the first ones that came in, how can our small water district determine if we need to audit our water losses? And I think very early on um, when I was talking, I had that little quick equation, what it boils down to. Um, so if you if you want to kind of think about it quick and dirty, if you think about how much water you produce, less how much water you're selling, uh, and if you can if you look at that number and that number seems important, significant, uh, worthwhile, that would be where I would start uh, that discussion. So uh, I think that's the maybe the the easiest answer. And then if you want to talk with us more about um, how much water you sell and, and if you meter, uh, all of those would come into play. So we'd be happy to talk to you um, one on one. Um, so I see that the question came in from Jeff. So Jeff, if you're interested in kind of diving into that a little bit deeper, uh, let us know and we'd love to talk to you a bit more about it. And then I'm going to throw this question to you, James. Um, it says, what about malfunctions in your water meters? What is that category? So I'm assuming you're talking about customer water meters here. Um, those would fall into the apparent loss category uh, because it's essentially, uh, you know, assuming the water meter is somehow jammed closed, um, water is getting to your customer. You're just not paying, getting paid for it. Uh, so, you know, customer side water meters are clearly going to fall in that uh, apparent loss side of things. Um, there's obviously going to be apparent losses from stopped meters, but also from slow meters or ones that are reading inaccurately. Um, you know, there's the whole other question about supply side meters, um, which can actually have a really big impact on your water loss audit results because that's the big number that everything is being else is being uh, subtracted from. Um, so, you know, having uh, accurate supply side meters and and knowing when they're malfunctioning because you're checking them is, is very important but we will be addressing both of those uh those topics in upcoming sessions and james this one kind of ties right to that where would you put reject and backwash from reverse osmosis systems um that's going to be part of your authorized unbilled use that's water that you're using as the as part of your process uh, and that's going to fall clearly in that category, unless for some bizarre reason you're charging yourself for that. Um, whether you need to account for that really depends on what the audit boundaries are. 
you know, are you starting your audit from the output of your water treatment plant or are you doing source to sink? And there are legitimate reasons to uh, do uh, both of those options uh, on some systems may audit from the source to the end of their production line and, and do a separate audit for the production line uh, and you know, end of production to uh, their customers so that they get a sort of production audit and, and a distribution audit. But uh, we'll be discussing that as well. It really kind of depends on where you put your boundaries. Uh, but either you're either not going to be considering it or you're going to be putting it in that authorized on build use. All right, we've got a couple that are really specific about assistance we can provide, so I'll make sure that we address those offline. Um, and then there's a question uh, which we, you know, we hear oftentimes is what is the best practice loss number? And James, I'll let you, I'll let you take that too. I can take that. I was going to say I'll I'll jump in and take that one. Um, That's good. <laughs> and I will say that there is no such thing as like an acceptable number. It's not like you're trying to get below any certain percentage or any certain amount. What you're looking at is continual improvement. And how can you improve the situation from where you are today to where you'd like to be? So it's really about you setting your own goals and where you want to be. And obviously, if you're in a very water scarce environment, your goal might be different than if you're in a very water rich environment. Um, but in any case, you're looking at your own system and the best way to look at it is, how can you improve your system from where you are today to where you wanna be and setting goals for how you will get there. So there isn't really any accepted number. I know some states have regulations that say a number, but the industry as a whole does not does not claim that there is a specific number where like if you're below 10 percent or 15 or some other number that that's good versus bad i mean look at it more from your own system's perspective and if it seems like you're losing a lot of water you want to reduce that number if you have a really tight system maybe working on um, revenue or some other part of the process might be a better place to go so make it a very system specific um uh discussion yeah and i would add you know one additional caveat to that as as you said there are some states that do have sort of a minimum requirement and those are minimums uh typically um doing better than that should should be your goal you know that that's really sort of the the, the low hurdle to jump over um so i you know if you're in a state that has a specific requirement um think about continuous improvement don't sort of look at that number whatever it is you know 10 percent uh and say well we need that so we're done um you can typically always do better and we've got several questions coming in about um will there be more training opportunities will there be more assistance opportunities so this is just the first kind of introductory to this session so there will be six more sessions after that just um, you, I, you can check our website to register for those and the emails will be going out as they become available. So you can register for each of those events. Um, we do provide assistance nationally. Uh, we're not limited to the states that we're housed in. So we do work with all 50 states and territories, tribes. Um, so yes, we do provide that assistance nationally. I'm not reading the questions, just answering them. <laughs> um, and I think that that is the majority. Oh no, more and more questions are just scrolling in. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's a comment uh, made but, about you know having to account reject and backwash water for discharge permits. And one thing that you will find is often that state accounting uh, uh, for, is is slightly different than than water audit accounting, but those are often looking at two different things. Uh, so. So Mary came back with another question about the, the RO water, the reject water. Um, Mary, I think that with the time that we have, since we're, we're 10 minutes past time already, why don't we um, schedule a time to kind of talk about that and how you could put that into your audit. And we do definitely offer assistance um, to help you with your understanding where numbers should go in your audit. We do not offer um, direct assistance in calibrating meters. We do not have that. Um, capability in-house, but we can definitely work with you to figure out who you could use to calibrate meters and what meters you should be calibrating. 
Um, so let's let's uh, get in touch, Mary. Our email addresses are on the screen. Uh, you can reach out to any or all of us, and we can definitely uh, work with you to to help answer some of those questions more specifically. Um, and to answer Brandon's question, yes, the free water audit software is on the AWWA website. So if you just look for free water audit software, AWWA, it's the first thing that comes up. In a future series, we will talk about the version six versus version five of the audit, <clears throat> because there are two different versions out there right now. Some people are using version five that came out, I don't know, about five or six years ago. And then some people are using version six, which just came out, you know, in the past, um, what, seven or eight months, something like that. <clears throat> so there is slight differences between the two versions. Um, so we will get into that in the in future webinars. Um, so just be aware of that, that when you go to download the software, there are two versions. There's the version five and the version six. Um, and they, they don't look exactly the same and they won't give exactly the same results. So just be aware of that when you go to the web page. I got another uh, couple of pretty specific questions um, from Jean. Jean, maybe if you can shoot us an email too, we'll try and, and answer them more specifically. Um, we've got a question about benefits of switching from analog to digital from Keith. And Keith, that one's pretty system specific too. So maybe we could talk with you um, kind of individually and learn a little bit about your system before we say, oh yeah, there's all these benefits when maybe maybe it wouldn't be the case for your system. So um, I'd, I'd love to talk with you more about that. Um, some comments about you know what different states are setting for requirements, um, but that understanding um, kind of Heather's answer to that very specific question is really the the best answer so even though there are some requirements out there for the states we definitely encourage you to do what is best for your system and not just meet that minimum um i think <laughs> uh, i think that we've covered most of the questions that came in or asked you to you know reach out to us for more specific details if you feel like we haven't addressed your question please let us know in an email. Um, otherwise, we're, we're pushing our time quite a bit and you guys have hung in there with us. So, um, oh, one last question just kind of came in and it's a good question. Is it really possible to have 0% loss? And the answer is no. <laughs> it really isn't. You're going to have water that you're going to give away. You're going to fight fires. You're going to never have a uh, hundred percent tight pipes where you don't have um you know any leaks at all ever uh homeowner side leaks they do go through the meters but sometimes they don't get counted by the meters you know our meters are never going to be always a hundred percent accurate so zero percent water loss is um unachievable <laughs> but and it should never watch. be your goal like that should not be your goal to achieve zero and if you have elected leaders or others who tell you that should be the goal then it's time to educate them uh, because that is not a possibility to have zero that's just not and even meters no household meter is going to measure 100 percent of the flow that goes through it There'll be times where you're using teeny tiny amount of water in the home and that's too small to register on the meter and you know all kinds of reasons so zero is not the goal <laughs> um so if you're having that issue where you have elected leaders who believe that again reach out to us and maybe we can help with the education process because that is not a goal that you could ever achieve All right, now I think we've, we've addressed all the questions. I keep saying that, they keep rolling in. <laughs> so I think we will, we, will, we will call it here. We thank you guys for your participation. We look forward to uh, the next session and that is coming up next month. Uh, so we look forward to, to working with you and hope that we have uh, been able to answer your questions and we will continue to address them via email if necessary. So again, thank you for your participation and we look forward to seeing you next month. Yeah, and thanks for uh, hanging in there late with us today. We appreciate it and uh, 
We really look forward to uh, having you on future webinars or helping you with assistance. See you soon.